A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 5 through 23. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. Were I to go up in your company, even for a moment, I would exterminate you. Take off your ornaments, therefore, I will then see what I am to do with you. So from Mount Horeb onward, the Israelites laid aside their ornaments. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of cloud stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses said to the Lord, You indeed are telling me to lead the people on, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said you are my intimate friend, and also you have found favor with me. Now if I have found favor with you, do let me know your ways, so that in knowing you I may continue to find favor with you. Then too this nation is, after all, your own people. I myself, the Lord answered, will go along to give you rest. Moses replied, if you are not going yourself, do not make us go up from here. For how can it be known that we, your people, and I have found favor with you except by your going with us? Then we, your people, and I will be singled out from every other people on the earth. The Lord said to Moses, this request too, which you have just made, I will carry out because you have found favor with me and you are my intimate friend. Then Moses said, do let me see your glory. He answered, I will make all my beauty pass before you, and in your presence I will pronounce my name, Lord. I who show favors to whom I will, I who grant mercy to whom I will, but my face you cannot see. For no man sees me and still lives. Here, continued the Lord, is a place near me where you shall station yourself on the rock. When my glory passes, I will set you in the hollow of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand so that you may see my back, but my face is not to be seen. In this passage, we see these powerful symbols this powerful imagery, this powerful words that we should recognize from our own lives. The first symbol, God moves outside of the camp. The temple of the Lord is outside of the camp so that the people are far away and Moses walks off by himself and when he walks to the tent, the people stand and look. Because by their sin, they have separated themselves from God who had drawn them to himself. I want you to imagine, if you can't imagine from your own life, at least imagine something that you may have seen or heard about, a husband and wife, and one of them commits adultery, so the one of them is sleeping on the couch. They are estranged from each other. They are talking to each other only by intermediaries, not because of a lack of the love of God, but because of the lack and the brokenness of the love of the Israelites. God who had been in their midst, God who had been with them, God who had shown him, who had shown them himself. 
they had cheated on. They had betrayed. And so there is this hurt and this longing that we must be able to see and to recognize. And then on the other hand, we see the Lord talking to Moses, and he says, you are my intimate friend. You are somebody to whom I speak plainly. Somebody who I have trusted. Somebody who I have loved. Somebody who has loved me in return. And Moses says, if I'm your intimate friend, let me see your face. God says, I will not let you see my face, but I will let you see my backside. I will let you see some glimpse, some partial, some reflection, some small part of my glory. And I will hide you in the hollow of the rock. Christ, who is the rock. The church, who is the rock. Now what I want to tell you is that while there was no intimacy anywhere in the world like there was between Moses and God, like there was between the people and God, all of that has been surpassed. All of that has been pushed aside. Jesus says, Moses, he says, there's none gro- there's no man born of woman greater than John the Baptist, but the least, in the kingdom of God, is greater than John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was greater than Moses in terms of his intimacy with God, and every single Christian has access to a greater intimacy, access to a greater intimacy with God than Moses or with John the Baptist. And so God can say to us, You are my intimate friend. And we can say, God, show us your face. And Jesus says to us, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. This love should change and transform every relationship that we have because every relationship that we have fails in comparison to it. And yet every relationship that we have is made greater by it. So that a Christian can love their spouse, can love their parents, can love their children, can love their neighbors, can love their enemies, more than any non-Christian can love any other person. Because of the love that they have experienced in God. And at the same time, the love of God makes all of these other loves seem to be as nothing.